we're um, keeping it on our um, uh, our UK ephemera Danica mayfly. Um, but again, as I say, this fly will work as well for the green drake in America. Um, now we've got a size 10 straight shank hook. Um, this is the SLD. Uh, you can tie this on um, on bigger hooks, so a size 8 or a size 10 long shank, something equivalent, uh, which would be perfect for the natural size. You can also look at color variations on this down in 12s and 14s for, for different flies, um, which is perfect. Uh, so again, I've gone with the 12 o wax thread. Uh, just trim that off there and take it to the back of the hook. So we're going to use pheasant tail again and the back end of the this fly is pretty similar um, but I don't tie in the the rib for this one. Uh, I make the tail twice the length as the emerger so the length of the body roughly and trap it in on top running backwards then double that back over open those out and that's to build this those darker segments at the back if you prefer not to wrap the pheasant tail you can use a darker uh, darker dubbing for those bat segments uh, also just using um, the uniform dubbing all the way along uh, doesn't make a huge amount of difference so it'll feel better as a as a fly tire um, getting close to it those darker segments at the back and now back to the Danica colored super fine dry fly dubbing uh, with those really long fibers so use the first couple of turns to lock everything in place and then you can tighten it up and tidy up that area and build up your your body going forwards so just a little bit more dubbing and then we'll be there don't want to go too far forwards uh, because we need plenty of space to work with for the wing on this one. So take your thread forwards to the eye at this point. And here we have a French partridge feather. And you'll see that the furry fibers have already been stripped off here. And what we want to do is actually stroke his fibers back until we find a point in the middle and we want to make sure that those fibers are the right length so you can pair it up against the hook and see I want quite a long draping hackle at the front here so I prepare, prepared it by stroking some fibers back and leaving that tip section forwards. And then to tie this in, um, we have it facing, so it's sweeping up and the tip facing back. And we trap that in facing that direction right at the tip of the fly and run that back nice and tight. And trim that tip section out and we leave that facing backwards for the time being. Now we have the interesting part with the CDC and there's multiple ways that we can we can do this um, but one of the 
great way is to create a is to split the thread and create a dubbing loop. Um, so here I've got an olive CDC feather and I'm going to pair it up with our standard natural CDC and it's particularly effective in the green drake but our own um, mayfly also has uh, quite a lot of green in it. Um, so by pairing that up you, you will get that combination of uh, green and green and sort of gray, dark grey showing. So what you'll see now is I've taken a needle and I've split the thread. So this is why you don't want to really go much finer than 12 o. And you'll see that I've now created essentially two threads. And we can lengthen that down a little. And the reason I've done this, uh, let's split that off. The reason I've done this is I now want to take these two feathers that I paired together and I want to slide them just a fiddly bit. There are tools out there to make this easier. Uh, I seem to like the pain of trying to do it myself. So I put them between the two threads that you created and let them get trapped in and let the thread match up and you can twist it and that will start tightening that thread back up and then take your scissors and the only problem is everything starts twisting around but you can start cutting one side of the feather away and twisting that thread up and this is creating a dubbing loop get that out of the way in a second but we'll just get that nice and tight and then we'll find out what fibers are causing us to there we go so you'll see we've got all these nice spiky CDC feathers now caught on a bit of the tip one of the feathers there trim that out and what we're going to do is wrap that around and we'll get this really nice sort of dubbing long fiber hackled like bit going forward with the nice color combination and then once we've tied all of that in, we'll stroke a oh, little bit left on that. Stroke it forward, take that thread in front. And now we're going to deal with the French partridge. And we do that like any other hackling. This is kind of like a soft hackle. We only want a couple of turns at most. So stroke those fibers, make sure that they're going to drape backwards. And this is where you hope that you've left yourself enough room at the front. And just stroke back as you turn, just to make sure that A, the fibers get released, um, but also that those CDC fibers are caught nicely facing backwards and we take that round I like to finish it at that point so when the feathers facing up 
you take the thread through the fiber let's bob and hold it there and go again you shouldn't trap any of the fibers tying that way stroke it back and out the way and place a couple of turns in front now go in with your thread don't breathe for a second trim that out hold everything in place and just neaten up the head area and then get your whip finish tool and pop the finishing touches on the fly there two whip finishes and there you have it, a great fly for the full adult ephemera danica, uh, the mayfly, utilizing the buoyancy of the CDC and then the French partridge hackle to hold the shape of the fly and also use the stiffness of the fiber to give you a pronounced sitting fly on the surface.